Brett and Mary Ellen Parsons um, playing for us this morning, so thank you for doing that. I wonder what stories you're telling yourself these days, and what stories are people telling you? The stories we tell shape how we feel about the world. Hopeful stories build confidence and give us a sense of direction. Disturbing stories can make us uneasy. We can't ignore difficult things happening in the world. We need to deal with trouble. But the stories that we repeat will influence how we approach the challenges. Let us pray. These days, O oh God, we seem to live in a world overwhelmed by bad news. We feel like the disciples at sea, tossed and turned in the chaos of current events. Help us to remember that we are part of your dream, that your spirit is at work bringing your vision to be. Strengthen us to be part of your work and help us to remember that we are not alone in this time of storm and turmoil. Amen. Good morning. This morning's reading is taken from Psalms 105, verses 4 to 22. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Touch not my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. When he summoned a famine on the land, he broke every staff of bread. He had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters, his neck was put in a collar of iron, until what he had said came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him, the ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his princes at his pleasure, and to teach his elders wisdom. The word of the Lord. Passage begins with an instruction, seek the Lord, God's presence and God's strength. And then the psalmist tells three stories to say why that instruction makes sense and why people can trust it. The first story is about identity. God chose Abraham and made a covenant with him and with his son and grandson. God always honors God's promises. So if God made a covenant with your forefathers and their descendants, the psalmist says, you can depend on God to honor that promise for you. At the harvest in Jewish tradition, each person was instructed to make an offering of the first fruits. And with that offering, they would tell this same story 
my father was a wandering Aramean. Part of the celebration of each harvest was the reminder that way back, God chose Abraham, making this abundance possible. So retelling the story of Abraham helps ground the person's identity in God's covenant. People can turn to God with certainty because God made a promise that God still honors. The second story is about Joseph. Knowing that the famine was coming, knowing that Egypt would be the place of safety in that time, God sent Joseph ahead to prepare the way for his family. Now the psalmist does not skip the hardship, reminds us of the chains of slavery. But because God enabled Joseph to understand the dreams of others, Joseph was released from prison, given highest status under Pharaoh, a position that enabled him to prepare for the famine for the Egyptians and for his family. Retelling that story helps people see that hardship has its place, but that God is always working for good, even if you can't see how things are going to work out in the moment. The third story that Fred didn't go on to read is about the Exodus. The psalmist acknowledges that the leaders of Egypt did not remember Joseph and the good that he did and oppressed his family and descendants. But then God sent Moses and Aaron with power to perform many signs. The plagues are described, the darkness, the hail, so the Egyptians would be glad to be rid of the people of Israel. Again, this is a story that the people recited regularly. Every Passover, the story of the details of the release from Egypt was retold. The story was repeated so that people who were again suffering would remember that God acted to save the people back then and would again. Whatever was going wrong, people could turn to God's strength and God's presence because that story in their history reminded them that God was always working for good. The stories of Abraham, Joseph, and Moses are our stories in a way as Christians because, Paul's, as Paul says, the church and the people of the church were grafted into God's family. They're less immediately formative of our identity, however. The stories we tell most often are the stories of Jesus. With every celebration of communion, for example, we retell the story of Jesus last night with his disciples, how he broke bread and shared it. And I got thinking that the stories that we read in the gospel are the stories that the disciples told and retold. Paul's letters are different. They were written and recopied. But no one wrote down the words of Jesus or the experiences of the disciples. The stories that were remembered and eventually recorded are the ones that the disciples told and retold. The gospel reading assigned for today is Jesus walking on the water, and I can imagine the disciples retold that story often, and often with a bit of a nudge at Peter. Do you remember starting to, re to sink, Peter? Your faith has grown a bit since that night. The story of Jesus coming to the boat on the water begins with Jesus wanting time alone. The news had come to him that John the Baptist had been put to death, and he got in a boat and headed to the wilderness. But the first time, he was followed by a crowd that needed to be fed in the wilderness. So after that crowd is dealt with, Jesus sends even the disciples away and goes up into the hill alone to ponder. Late in the night, the disciples are struggling with strong winds and waves, and a figure comes walking across the water. They are sure it is a ghost. What else could it be? But Jesus identifies himself. And Peter, ever the leader, says, If it's really you, Lord, command me to come to you. Jesus summons him. So Peter gets out of the boat and eyes on Jesus walks toward him. But part way he realizes where he is and he looks at the waves and the wind and he starts to sink. Jesus has to take his hand, raise him up and get him back into the boat. 
at which point the wind ceased to blow. Telling the story, the disciples would tease Peter. Remember how you took your eyes off Jesus? How you looked at the stormy water and sank? But they would also tell others that when Jesus got into the boat and the wind calmed, they were sure he had the power of God in him. Imagine what it was like that night, they might say. You would have believed as well. Now, as a fairly logical person, I've always found this story a bit difficult. How did Jesus manage to walk on the water? But retelling the story many times has helped me to learn some things. First, uh, it's that need apart. Jesus needed to be alone, to grieve, and to come to terms with the way he was putting his life at risk with his ministry. He'd taken that time alone in prayer. But then there's Peter's part of the story. He's in a boat that's being tossed by wind and waves. He and the others are struggling. But when Jesus summons him, he's able to get out of the boat and walk into the storm. As long as he keeps his eyes on Jesus, he can stay above the waves. It's when he turns to look at the wild wind and water that he sinks. Jesus chastises him for losing faith, and I'm sure the disciples enjoyed telling that part of the story. But it's an important part of the story. Peter can deal with the storm as long as he keeps his focus on Jesus. And this is the part of the story that leads me to ask, what stories are we telling ourselves in this stormy time? Are we telling stories that are focused on Jesus or on the storm? When the outbreak of COVID hit a nursing home um, in northern, west, eastern Ontario hard, it made sense that that story was in the news. It was early in the outbreak in Ontario. The story helped us to understand how powerful the disease was. But that story of disaster in a nursing home got repeated and repeated. It led to extreme fear and it led to despair. The disease is so hard on old people that they just die. But there is another narrative that can be told. COVID-19 got into the Mapleview nursing home and spread almost instantly to every resident. That part of the story is the same. The next part isn't. Every resident in Mapleview recovered. The staff figured out how to care for each and every resident, how to keep them from getting disastrously sick. The staff worked hard and brought everyone through. The story of the outbreak at Mapleview challenges despair. Another place that COVID-19 spread wildly was migrant farm workers. When two people died and so many tested positive, there was a lot of anger. And some of the anger was well-placed. The conditions that migrant farm workers live in all of the time are difficult and they are downright dangerous in this season. But there was also anger in communities that couldn't start to reopen because the foreigners in their community were sick. Workers were blamed. But again, that wasn't the narrative in Bruce Gray. On a farm in southern Bruce County, two workers got sick and our health unit immediately sent in a team to test all of the workers to figure out who had COVID-19 and who had been in contact with those who were sick. Self-isolation protocols were immediately put into place. Those who were sick were given support. All who had been in contact were quarantined and they were given support. They were loaned cell phones so that they could stay in touch. Translation services were put in place so symptoms could be monitored. Food was provided to ensure that they were looked after in their isolation. 
In some parts of southwestern Ontario, people just looked at the storm moving through the migrant farm community, saw just the sick people, got upset and angry. There was an atmosphere of despair. All of them were going to get sick. But here, our health unit saw sick people who needed looking after. And with that change in perspective, they stopped the out outbreak here and they traced the outbreak in the London area. It was a totally different result. And that's a story that I tell and retell. I told it in a sermon a couple months ago already. And I tell the story because it's a story where people acted with compassion. It's a story where people recognized who was vulnerable and went out of their way to provide the necessary support. With COVID-19, there are a lot of stories of blaming going around. The stories identify one group or another as irresponsible and causing new outbreaks. Those are stories that focus on the storm and demonize people. Currently, it's those 20 to 40 year olds who love to party who we are blaming most. This week, one of our headlines talked about the deal that Canada made to secure doses of the vaccine for our country when it becomes available. It's a good story for us, something to look forward to. But the effect of the virus on poorer countries has rather fallen off the news, off our radar. And I begin to worry that if first world countries book all of the vaccines, how will people in Africa, in South America, ever get protection? I feel like the story of how we eradicated polio by taking vaccine to every corner of the world is a story that we should be retelling in this time. We are always telling stories. We choose to repeat messages to ourselves and to those around us, and it matters which stories we choose to tell. The thing about the story of walking on water says to me that in the midst of a storm, if all we see is the storm, we will fall into despair. We will sink. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, if we remember his teaching, the values and vision that he embodied, we'll find a way to deal with the storm. Let us pray. God of all the world, we bring to you the needs of our time, the needs for security, the need for care, the need for vision. We pray for communities that are hard hit by COVID-19 in our country, in our continent, in our world. We pray for leaders who embody wisdom and compassion. We pray for ordinary people who can make a difference. We pray for a renewal of your wisdom and vision in us all. Today we also pray for the people of Lebanon, hit hard by this disease and then devastated by a disastrous explosion. We pray for the injured, those who have lost loved ones, for a city reeling. We pray for those caring for the injured, those searching for the lost, those planning how to rebuild. O oh God, we pray for those who have fallen out of the news, those needing help rebuilding communities, those seeking to deal with poverty and injustice, those struggling to get through each day. God of all the world, send your spirit to inspire us to reach for your vision. Fill us with compassion and with hope. Lead us toward the world you dream. Lord God, we bring to you the people we know who need your love and care, your peace and your wisdom. We bring to you those who are ill. We bring those who grieve. We bring those feeling lost and vulnerable. 
we bring to you those struggling to get through each day. Send your healing spirit. Come with strength and courage, vision and peace. And we come ourselves, O God, seeking to walk in your way, seeking wholeness ourselves and seeking to be your disciples in our community. Guide us, inspire us, encourage us to follow in the footsteps of your Son who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Enter the week to come with hope and with courage. Know that you are part of God's great vision. Go in peace to share the peace of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forever. Amen. Mary Ellen.